can sentiments and lifestyles save The Sims 4? Well, we can't know yet, but I did just finish watching the Sims 4 Snowy Escape live stream, and today I'm going to give you my honest opinion on what I've seen so far regarding these new gameplay aspects, as well as anything else that I think is going to impact the gameplay that we've seen so far. So let's get started. So we found out today there are going to be 16 different lifestyles, and lifestyles are an expression of a Sim's behaviors and habits over time. They were described in the live stream as being the lived experience of The Sims. So the more your Sims participate in a certain behavior, the more progress they'll make towards a certain lifestyle. I'm going to show you why I am still a little bit skeptical about how this is going to work. Now, this is obviously a frame from the live stream, and you can see some of these lifestyles here. Close-knit, people person, indoorsy, outdoorsy, junk food fiend, health food nut, single and loving it, hungry for love, adrenaline seeker, frequent traveler, coffee fanatic, and workaholic. Here's an example of the single and loving it lifestyle. It says Sims living this lifestyle happily enjoy the single life and savor their independence. To acquire or maintain this lifestyle, avoid being in a committed romantic relationship and romantic media. So the less your Sim watches romantic media and has committed relationships, the more progress they'll make towards this lifestyle. That's how I understand that this is going to work. So I like the premise, right? But I'm really not sure about these lifestyle effects and if they're going to be anything more than annoying mood buffs. So these effects for this one in particular increased skill gain in all skills while your sim is single. Okay, that's pretty cool. Um, less likely to acquire romantic sentiments. So it works together with the sentiment system. The sentiment system is going to come for free in the base game. So you don't have to buy this expansion pack to get sentiments. And they look a lot better than lifestyles to me anyway. But if you buy this expansion pack, you'll get the lifestyles as well. Now back to the effects. They find romantic media somewhat unrealistic. In I don't know what exactly that means. Like how, what is, how does that translate to how your sim's going to behave? I don't know. Um, increased work performance when single. All right. Um, tense when in a new committed romantic relationship. So pretty much your sim's going to be tense when they do things that are against their lifestyle. Happy when they do things that are in line with their lifestyle. And of course, they get these increased skill gains and work performance. And then we got also got to look at how these lifestyles are going to show up in the sim panels. So they're going to show up just underneath the traits where your traits are now. Here is another example of the energetic lifestyle. Sims who are energetic love to stay active and keep moving. When these were first announced, we weren't sure how these were going to differ from traits. So here we can clearly see they're going to differ from traits by giving your sim these various effects. It doesn't really go into depth on what these effects are. Various benefits when performing high energy activities. Not sure what those benefits are. Um, but anyway, prefers to perform high energy activities. Again, I'm not sure how that translates into actual gameplay. Increased work performance in high energy careers. Decreased work performance in low energy careers. I kind of like that. I mean, that makes sense. And dislikes low energy activities and becomes tense when going without activity for too long. So that's just kind of like the active trait as well. So far, I'm not sold on the lifestyles. They just seem, like I said in my previous video, like it's just sort of a glorified trait system. I do really like the idea that your sim can change their lifestyle over time time. So say that your sim is a junk food fiend and they start eating healthy all the time, then they can move into a more health conscious lifestyle. That sounds pretty neat to me. But I'm going to have to see more of how this actually works over time in the game. In the live stream we were shown under gameplay options, you will be able to turn off lifestyles in each individual save file. So when toggled on, Sims can acquire lifestyles which change the autonomy and grants various gameplay effects. And turning it off will remove all lifestyles from a save file. So you don't have to play with these if you don't like them. Sentiments, on the other hand, are more integrated into the game and you're not going to be able to turn those off. But I don't think you're going to want to. 
There will also be potions that you can buy from the reward store to remove lifestyles if you have one that you don't like for your sim. There will be a cheat to add and remove lifestyles to all sims. And there will be like a coach, a lifestyle coach that you can call on the phone to remove lifestyles. I really like the idea of this, but I feel like it's going to be very shallow. Like you're just going to call somebody on the phone and say, hey, I don't like this lifestyle anymore. They're going to say, okay, poof, gone. Um, I feel like they could have done more with the lifestyle coach. Like maybe if you went to work with your coach over time, they could help you encourage. Maybe we could even work like the encouragement feature in The Sims 2 and encourage your sim to work towards a healthier lifestyle. But I don't think that's how it's going to work, unfortunately. I think it's going to be just a poof, one and done type of thing, like many things that I saw in this live stream. Let's talk about aspirations. This expansion pack comes with two aspirations. And once again, I am very disappointed by the aspirations. They are location-based. I really dislike these location-based aspirations. You know the ones I'm talking about, City Native and Jungle Explorer. These don't add anything outside of the world that they come with. I feel like aspirations should be able to be used in any world by any sim. By adding these basically tutorial aspirations with certain things you have to accomplish that can only be accomplished in one world, it really limits the reach of these aspirations and just makes them feel shallower to me. I don't like them and I am not impressed by them. So we have Mount Com Komarebi Sightseer. So you have to eat food at the Festival of Light, Snow or Youth, take a selfie with the mascot, collect a simi and swim for an hour in the river. Yeah, these are all fun and good, but w once again, you have to have a sim who either lives here or travels here. To me, it's almost like they might as well add no aspirations. So the second aspiration that they showed on the stream is extreme sports enthusiast. So once again, you have to go to Mount Komarebi in order to complete the tasks the quest for this aspiration to go down the bunny slope, use a vending machine, use a Mount Komarebi info board. And of course, these are just the first level. I'm not a fan of how aspirations work in The Sims 4 to start with. I don't like this quest system that they're on. Um, but these especially are really disappointing. I honestly don't know what other kind of aspirations they could have added though. Maybe something like a traveler aspiration where your sims just like to travel and perhaps Mount Komarebi is one of the places they could have visited. I would have even preferred an aspiration that was tied to the new career. And I'm gonna talk about the new career in a moment. Before we get to sentiments, let's just talk about traits for a moment. So there are two new traits coming with this expansion. Adventure Adventurous, I believe is one of them and the other one is proper. The proper trait you're probably familiar with if you played The Sims 3, it's a really good trait. Proper Sims will bow. Instead of dating, they like to do courting, which I think is pretty cool. And they are the only Sims who actually have to shower before they get into the hot springs. And can I just say I told you so? Okay, I know I got some hate on Twitter for saying that there weren't going to be rules around the hot springs, but there aren't. I was right. And I'm not the kind of person who always likes to be right or anything. I will eat my words if I am wrong. And most of the time, I love to be proven wrong whenever I talk about this stuff. But here's one instance where it's true. There are no rules around the hot springs. There are showers there that your Sims can use and they are supposed to change into their swimwear, take a shower before they get into the hot springs. But if they don't, nothing happens. No consequences. But proper Sims will always, I guess, shower before they get into the hot springs. So that's something, I guess. I really wish it could have been like in The Sims 3 that your Sims would be seen to be misbehaving if they didn't shower and change into the correct clothing and they'd be kicked out of the springs. That would have added so much more. Just little things like this could have added so much more depth to this. And I'm disappointed that they didn't add these kind of things in. So back to the proper trait. I actually do think it's a really good trait. It's a nice edition. It's something that you can use in all of your worlds for any sim. The adventurous trait, they really glossed over these. I felt like they really glossed over these in the live stream. They were like, yeah, we got no two new traits, but look at this create a sim stuff. So I don't know why they glossed over the adventurous trait. I didn't get any information about that, um, but it's probably something location related that you can only use in Mount Komarebi. 
We are also getting one new career with this expansion pack, the Salaryman career, which I always love to get new careers in the game. There are two different branches, Supervisor and Expert. So you can kind of get a little look at that here in the corner of the screen. Um, it just works like any other rabbit hole career from what I can tell. Although I do always love getting new careers, of course, who doesn't? Um, I feel like this one just wouldn't really fit in any of the other world. Salaryman is kind of a very Japanese career, and I get that they were trying to add something that fits in with the pack, but I would have preferred something, like I said, that you could use in other worlds. Now, you can use this, this in other worlds, just personally, I don't feel like it fits very well. Now, let's talk about sentiments. This is what I feel like is going to be the saving grace for this expansion pack, not for The Sims 4 in general, but I do feel like this is going to add some type of depth that we need to the game. It is not a personality overhaul. It is not a fix for all of the underlying problems that we still have with The Sims 4, such as whims, aspirations, traits, and just personality in general, AI. It's not gonna fix any of that, but I really truly feel like it will add something meaningful. I hope. <laughs> so here's kind of what we're looking at so far. Your Sims are now going to have these profile panels. Under your profile panels, you're going to have like a little bio, you're going to have their current relationships, and you're going to get to see their actual sentiments. This Sim here in this screenshot has a festering grudge. He has a deep-seated grudge against Shiguru. It's hard to forget or forgive the past, which may make being around Shiguru feel very unpleasant for Naoki. This is a bitter sentiment. It's festering, and it's going to last for a long time. I really like that. I'm not exactly sure. Once again, how this is going to translate into gameplay because even though we've seen a gameplay trailer and a gameplay live stream I still feel like I have seen very little actual gameplay especially when it comes to the most important parts in my opinion lifestyle and sentiments so we did get to see a little bit of this in the live stream when they took the sim out to an actual community lot the sim ran into their enemy who they have a festering grudge against and they got angry plus one simmering rage here but you can also see that this is a very low value buff and the sim being energized is overtaking this rage but anyway at least it does exist at least there is some kind of indication that your sim is feeling the rage of being near of being near someone they have a grudge against. Graham actually said in the live stream that the Sim is very upset, but he's not though. He's not. He's energized. So he has a angry plus one buff tacked onto the end. Not exactly what I would call very angry, but at least we get something. Sentiments were described in the live stream as being a core gameplay system and that they are going to add depth. Their words, not mine. There are some sentiments that are going to be exclusive just to Snowy Escape, but there will also be sentiments that all of your Sims can feel in all of your worlds, and that's coming to base game, like I said before. So your Sim will be able to hold grudges and have, you know, memorable moments with the Sims in their lives. I... I'm really looking forward to the system, I have to say. This is one of the only things I've, been, I've looked forward to in The Sims 4 in a long, long time. So let's look at some more examples that they showed us today. So here we have another Sims profile panel, and look at these sentiments. Megumi's sentiments about Naoki, unity and hiking, deeply connected. So your Sims are feeling deeply connected with one another, enchanted from a moment in the mountains. That's after they had a woohoo in a cave, which was also really cool. I love the new woohoo spots. You can woohoo in a cave or in the hot springs. When asked how long these sentiments are actually going to last, uh, there was an answer from one of the sim gurus that some of them can last as long as weeks if they're extremely strong. And that I guess that can be positive or negative. I'm happy to see that we actually have some kind of negative emotion or feeling in the game. I feel like there are no negative consequences. They try to make everything so safe. You could already dislike Sims and have anger towards Sims, but now having these grudges just feels like it adds an extra layer to that. So I do like this. There's also going to be a social climbing event and your Sims can bond over that. So here's a better look at how that looks. Enchanted for a moment in the mountains, bonded during epic mountain climb deeply connected, unity and hiking. So these are all really cool ways to like bond your Sims together and give them, it's almost a memory. 
Not quite. It's its own thing. It's a sentiment. As always, though, I'm going to have to see how this plays out in the actual game. I'm excited to get my hands on this so that I can play it in a normal world and see what types of sentiments my Sims develop and how they actually impact their behavior over time. Because that's what's going to tell me if this is really adding depth to the game or if it's just another crappy system slapped on that doesn't actually do anything but give them some mood buffs. That's what I'm afraid of, but I am remaining hopeful for this because this is the first thing I've had to be excited about when it comes to The Sims 4, like I said, in years. Because if this just ends up being a screen with some text on it and your Sim gets a plus one anger or a plus one happy and that's it, it does nothing else to the AI, it does nothing else to their behavior, has it really changed anything? As soon as this is released on November 13th, I will be purchasing it and trying out this new system extensively, and I will always let you know my true and honest opinion on how this system is working in the game. And all of my reviews are from the perspective of a player who likes generational, rotational family play. Now I just want to share with you a few more things that I had noted down while I was watching the live stream and I thought might be of interest to you. First of all, the lots look amazing and the world is beautiful as always. Always. They actually got Sims players, some of the game changers to build the lots in the world, and I think that was a great move. They look wonderful. But The Sims 4 has always been beautiful, so that's no surprise. But I really do like that they tried to bring in talented builders to build these lots so we're not left having to renovate everything. School uniforms. There will be school uniforms, but only in this world from what I can tell. Only Sims who live here in Mount Komorebi will wear the school uniform. Sims will take their shoes off at the door if you use these platforms. One thing that they showed us in the live stream is that sometimes children will be a little mischievous, won't take off their shoes, and then they'll get in trouble with their parents. Not really in trouble, they get an embarrassed moodlet, but... That's something, I like that. The platforms are gonna be free to everyone. They are coming to the base game, so you don't have to purchase the pack to get the platforms. There are gonna be more vending machines and a lot more collectibles in the game. And there are also gonna be vending machines that serve hot and cold food that will actually warm up or cool down your Sims. I actually really like that. There are new deaths. There are two new deaths. A uh, vending machine death. So if something gets stuck in a vending machine, your Sim can shake it and the vending machine can fall on them and kill them. There's also going to be a death from falling. So if your Sim doesn't have the skills, they try to climb up the side of the mountain, they can fall off and die. That is probably my favorite death so far because at least it's realistic instead of something completely ridiculous like dying of embarrassment. There is also hiking and this was one of my favorite things that I saw from this pack. The hiking looks really cool because it's not just your Sims walking next to each other. They will actually walk around with each other, interact with each other, take selfies and pictures. I, as somebody said in my Discord when we were watching this together, I wish they would take pictures of like the actual scenery, but they stop and take selfies instead. Still, it's something. They're having an interaction with the environment and they, they build relationships, talk to each other while they walk around. I really like this hiking. I'm not sure if this is going to be available in other worlds or just in this world. I really hope we're going to be able to hike like in outdoor retreat can't think of the name of the world off the top of my head or in in other worlds that have you know places that your sims could hide i don't know for sure your sims will be able to go on vacation so all players can go on vacation to any world any world that you have in your game your sim can now go on vacation there willow creek any of the vacation destination worlds that we already have mount coma Rebi, anywhere your sims can go there is a new rental lot type and you can build rental lots in any world mount coma Rebi will come with some already pre-built, but you can change any lot in any world to a rental lot type and then have your Sims go and vacation there. I love this. This is one of the coolest things about the pack. And once you get to your vacation destination, if it doesn't have everything you need, like say you're going to bring your toddler with you, then you can order supplies there right from the rental unit. You can purchase a toddler bed, a potty, uh, some kid toys, lounge chairs. There, you can purchase um, any of the supplies that you might need. So you don't have to worry about bringing everything with you. So the hot pot and the kotatsu are going to be separate from each other. You can actually put the hot pot on any surface. It doesn't have to go on the kotatsu. The kotatsu Tatsu actually keeps your Sims warm. 
and it's gonna have a temperature control, so that is really cool. There are gonna be 15 new types of food drinks and recipes in the game and that does not include the stuff that comes in the vending machines. There will be snow depth but only in certain areas high up on the mountain. There is not snow depth like down in the neighborhood. It looks like it's only in a couple of select places but you can see it right here where your sims are actually walking through the snow. I'm kind of disappointed it's not going to be everywhere at least I didn't see where it was everywhere. I only saw where, where it was a couple places up on the mountain. There's gonna be a social climbing event or excursion. It's actually gonna use the event system that you're probably familiar with that's used for parties and things like that. I was not crazy about this. It looked like it would be really fun once and then every other time it's going to be exactly the same. You're gonna follow the same path. You're gonna go over the same maps to get to the very top of the mountain. Now they did make a big deal about how they were trying to make this replayable. And some of the things that they said in the live stream are that every time you take the path up to the top of the mountain, there's gonna be different events. You might run into wildlife at different points. Um, there's some places there will be a tent that could help you. Other times it won't be there. And just like different things will happen to you each time you do this climb. To me, that doesn't sound like enough variety to make this worth doing multiple times. I think they should have done random maps for each leg of the journey. You're gonna have a loading screen between the maps anyway, so that would be a really good opportunity to insert random maps each time. That way, every single journey would be different and you'd be going over different terrain every time. But unfortunately, they didn't do that and it looks like the kind of thing that's gonna be, you're gonna do it once or twice and you're not gonna wanna do it anymore because you're gonna get bored. Even, even if, you could, you know, run into different wildlife or conditions might be slightly different. It's still the same terrain. And while we're here, here's the new woohoo and cave. <laughs> so you can click on a cave, choose woohoo, and your sims will go in there. Hearts will float out and bats. And then they'll get, they'll, they'll get a sentiment from that as well. Couple more little random things I noticed. Um, there was no mention of the Simstagram, so I believe that was just for the trailer, and they didn't actually upgrade the Simstagram or make it interactive or anything like that. So that's a bit of a disappointment. I hate it when they do that, when they put things in the trailer that look like they would be such cool features in the game, and then you find out it was just for marketing and it's not actually in the game. There's also gonna be the S-Pop station is gonna be added for all players in the base game. And let me tell you, the music sounds awesome. I love the music in The Sims 4, and this was no exception. Now the S-Pop station initially came with City Living and they did clarify the City Living portion of those songs are going to remain exclusive to City Living. The free stuff that is going to be added for all players is only, I guess, what's coming with this expansion. Now I want to hear from you guys. What do you think? Did you watch the live stream or have you just watched some summaries like mine? What do you think so far? What do you think about sentiments and lifestyles I am specifically interested in hearing about? And also any other thoughts that you guys have about this new expansion from what you've seen so far? Leave a comment down below and let me know. I always love to hear from my viewers because I know most of you guys play in a similar way to me. And so I really like to, uh, to throw around ideas with you guys and see what you like and what you don't like. So let me know. I will be bringing you more on this expansion pack as soon as it is released. My name is Cindy and I will see you with a new video very soon. Thank you so much for watching.